Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to talk about a recent malware incident in the city's Skyline community. Now, unfortunately, throughout gaming, in the world of modding, malware has become a much bigger issue in recent months. I covered a few months ago a guy who was inserting malware into cracked BMG mod, BMNG mods, then we saw on Minecraft it's happened a couple of times. Well, what we've got here is another case, this time with City Skylines 2, where the traffic mod, which I'm guessing adds traffic to the game, was hijacked with a dodgy math library, which we'll take a look at in a second. So this is an upload on GitHub in order to allow people to analyze the malware. Now the original, of course it went there, and we can see on the Paradox form, which is a place for sharing mods, to my understanding. Important update for all City Skyline 2 players. There's a potential security issue which has affected the traffic mod for Cities Skylines 2. Late Monday evening, an outside actor pushed an update to the mod which includes a DLL file we believe is malicious. We've already removed it, and the current version, as of the 31st of October, is safe to download and use. But if your mod synced and you played the game using the mod between Monday and then, there is a possibility you may have the malicious file. Working to determine the nature of this DLL, and we will update you as soon as possible. In the meantime, please take the following steps as soon as possible to secure your computer. If you have not played with the mod, nor subscribed, nor downloaded it, then you're good. If you have the mod and have not played between Monday and today, let the mod sync as normal and the malicious file should be deleted automatically. Please scan your system with an anti-malware program like Windows Defender. I actually noticed when I was downloading the sample for analysis that Microsoft Small Screen now has the file detected as malware. If you have played, please check your local files. If you have any malicious files installed, you will find them here. Yes. And yes, this is the important one. So they are currently working to go through, and they haven't found any indication of other mods containing the same thing. They contacted the mod who was compromised. So the way this was achieved was similar to what I showed with the airship mod, where the modder was hacked, and then their account was taken over for the purpose of spreading this malware on the official repository. Now they have confirmed that there was no other distribution of this malware. So let's take a look. So it's now, if we go to virus total, it's now got uh, 15 detections, luckily improve, including Microsoft. Win32 Shilud, that doesn't seem all that informative, but we can see if there's any obvious checks. And it is a fake math library. Yeah, it doesn't seem that that's got any specific hits. So let's go over to Binary Ninja and take a closer look. So how does this work? Well, let's go to DLL main, which is the entry point on a DLL. So we get to this DLL main dispatch, which is called by the entry point. We call this, call this, and then we get here. And this is what I, I've just named this function mal underscore entry, because I believe this is where the actual malware, you also call into this, which does something else. And uh, one of the red flags about this DLL, of course, is despite claiming to be a math library, if you know how DLLs work, there's no exports. There's nothing being exported that could be used. Now, the first way I found this potentially sketchy code was looking in the import section. We can trace out anything to do with IO. Now, we got quite a few create file, delete file. A. If we look at this create file, a, we see that an a handle to files is being opened. And where is LP file name coming from? Well, it's coming from this. And where is val430 coming from? Well, we can trace through that. But so we can see a, a loop that's doing quite a bit of IO. And that was the first red flag. So then the legitimate files are over here. And on the traffic x86 64, we actually have symbols. Uh, that just means that I don't have to do because normally uh, we would just get re address names and we would have to do the rather tedious job of naming the functions we were interested in, but thanks to having debug symbols, we end up with decompilation that is almost as good as ordinary source code, and we can see this. This is the legit part of the mod. Everything here is normal. You can see this one doesn't seem to use any libraries. Here we see an import to mscool, and here we see how the uh, fastmath.dll is imported into this traffic dot, B, uh, dot bndb, uh, which is, I think this is C sharp, so it's not going to decompile very well. 
uh, although we could use we can use dn spy to see how this works but ultimately it calls out into this fast math which is expected to be a mathematics library but that's not what we actually have here now what you may not have known is that by using run dll32.exe we can actually debug dlls without needing to run the mod so doing this we can do some dynamic analysis and you can hit control g in this and then we can actually hook any api we want so we can see what's calling into this now we are in the malicious file and we can see okay so we call flush file buffers that's the first call and we can see Okay, so we got an iterator here. So one way to get around that, just breakpoint here. Now this is actually going to be used as a method for obtaining the directory of a system folder. If we step over it, uh, we can see that it wanted our local app data folder. Now that's a strange thing for a math library to be going into, but I'm sure there's a good explanation for why that might be. And this is simply an iterator over this string. And we hit this function. So just doing some allocation on the heap we call memcopy now this we call this find first file a and that's wild code so it's basically iterating through our local app data which is much more like something an info stealer would do than something legitimate software would be doing we're back to finding the next file and then i assume the test eax here is just to see did we actually find any file and then we go through the above iterator again until we don't find any files. Now we can skip to the end of this loop by putting a break after the loop has finished, and then we know it's found all of the files. Then we close the find function, and we're freeing some memory, nothing super interesting. Oh, we're... Okay, so this is actually an attempt to cover our tracks, but of course the benefit of running stuff in a debugger is... We don't have to. We, we we don't have to do that. We can start. We can stop and start whenever we want. Now we can watch uh, by finding the pointer in memory as this iterates through the files. We can actually see all the names of them. And it seems like it's mostly just iterating through every single. I'm actually going to clear the breakpoint. So I put a I put a read breakpoint on there, but that just creates a ton of noise. So we'll uh, we'll get rid of this point and here you can see the uh, structure that contains the information now not all of this uh, some of this is non-ascii like the date because uh, there you can actually on the microsoft docs you can see what the struct actually contains and it's iterating through the local app data and by adding the struct type we can see a bit more uh, i'll change the capture so you get better quality because uh, we've gone back uh, to our uh, static analysis now that we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on here so you can see that the dw file attribute uh if that is was i that this was my guess before i actually uh, did this but yeah this is in fact uh, if this is a directory that makes sense so and then we can uh, and then if it's not a directory what do we do nothing so basically we're assuming that because as it should be in the local app data, it should always be a directory. Now here is the other kind of weird function. Now this function, I'm not clear if it's actually getting uh, called. It's possible that it does in ordinary usage, but it does something truly strange, uh, copying all of this stuff together uh, into this data buffer. It's it's a strange function, but I, I'm not entirely... Because then that gets, so if that ran before, which I'm not entirely clear that it does, uh, that would that would affect this, and then this is an XOR unpacker that simply XORs this with 0x33. So now that we've actually ran analysts on all of these, okay, this makes way, okay, so there's a bunch of XORed stuff in here. So I'm going to have to try and get that out. So this actually becomes the pointer that goes to where all of this data goes. And then the access to it here is the actual decrypt function. So let's take a closer look at what was going on here. Here is the actual uh, 
Here we go. And here is where this blob actually lives. Now, if we wait for the XOR to finish, so we'll go here, as we jump around, uh, we start, oh, M MZ, oh, is this actually going to be a P binary then? Okay, so I've extracted this binary. Let's see if there's any, oh, a couple of questionable things in here. But no, I, I will open this in binary ninja in a second. But there's no obvious, uh, there's no obvious signs of command and control activity, which is the main mystery in this payload at this point. Okay, so this is actually a DLL. So we we can tackle this the same way we tackled the previous one. Now this kind of stuff is usually easier to chat GPT it than manually write it. Uh. I don't think that's big endian, but like, well, we'll see if it gets the right answer. Well, I mean, not the most impressive, but yeah, wallet seed second. Okay, I I think we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, wallet seed. So that is an interesting obfuscated mess. Uh, the only thing that's kind of clever about this sample is, as you saw in Detector Easy, despite uh, actually having the most malicious part of the payload packed, it's not detected as a packer, and it's kind of hard to follow. Like, we can see the crawling around, but then there's uh, that second piece. Once we get that out, it's like, okay, uh, we figured you out. So... That's going to be all uh, for this video. So what should you do if you've been affected by this? Well, the, the main thing you should do is change any passwords. Uh, well, your crypto wallet's probably already been drained, but if applicable, move your crypto. Change everything. Assume any account that was on that computer uh, is compromised. Sign in, sign out. Uh, given this is detected by antivirus, running an antivirus scan is probably good enough to remove this. Uh, it's detected by Defender now, and it doesn't seem... Well, the persistence mechanism here, rather than attaching itself at startup, is simply to run every time you run your game. So I hope this video is interesting. That's all for me for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.